thing. study tonight. Before we begin with that, is there any announcements you'd like to share with us? <coughs> okay, if not, uh, I believe anyone that is, you want to read it? Yes, tonight we're going to practice as soon as um, service is over, and uh, we won't be trying to get in the choir and fight all that tonight. We're just going to scatter out out here, get missed, and uh, be safe, and uh, we'll just concentrate on whatever the music we are going to have a musical program for those listening in, uh, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday on the 20th at 10 a.m. Looking forward to that. Any other announcements? If not, how about prayer groups? Anyone want to mention anyone out loud? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Yes, ma'am. We have uh, several others of our church family that is recovering uh, from surgeries and those who are still in the hospital, those who have gone to rehab, and those who are getting well at home. So let's remember all of those. How about by the uplifted hand? Well, let's all go to the Lord in prayer and discern these requests. Uh, Brother David, if you'll mourn, you lead us in prayer. Uh, let's turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, we're going to be speaking on this subject, the light of the world, Jesus. The light of the world, Jesus. John chapter 1, we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Our Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings once again upon the reading of your holy and precious word upon the study of this hour may we glorify you with our full attention and be united in our hearts and our minds as we seek to learn from your scripture and from this study a little bit more about your son Jesus as the light of the world it is in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. lights are something that are important to all of us think about just how important lights are we use lights just about in every uh, situation of life. There's lights at home. We go home, we flip a light switch on, and there's instant lights. We use lights on the job site. Think about all the lights that are used inside and outside to make sure that our paths are lighted to get to where we need to be. There's lights uh, not only at home and at work, but in the schoolhouses. Even in daylight, we have lights that we turn on just to make sure those hallways that do not have windows, we can see how to walk appropriately down the hallways and inside the school buildings as well. And then we have our outside buildings or our shops at home. We have lights we turn on so that we can see uh, what we're going to do by light. There's lights in our cars. Think about the lights, not only traveling down the highway, but the inside interior light we switch on when we're looking for something. 
There's lives in the church. We're looking at these lives on tonight. Uh, we're enjoying the lives that we have, be able to see by. It. There's lights in the ball field, wherever we go to a ball field, whether it's baseball or football. We have all these great, huge lights that shine down on the field so we can see who, who is playing and see every play that is made. There's lights everywhere when you think about it. And in this time we call Christmas, it's not uncommon for us to ride by just to look at people's houses, how they have decorated Christmas with lights upon their outside trees and uh, along the uh, eaves of the house or maybe their porches and we, we just have a wonderful thought about Christmas time and the lights that are put up and then we think about uh, the light shows that go on and we're bedazzled by the many places that have these light shows and all the creations they've put up their imaginations at work how they've decorated and, and I'll tell you what it just it bewilders us with people that can think about these things to light up uh, their parks with. There's been some talk about a great light fixing to show up on December 21st called the Christmas Star. And it's something of, of great interest to a lot of people in our day and time in which we are living. This will be the first time in 800 years that this star will come together so bright that you'll be able to see it on December 21st just after sunset. Why all the excitement about it? because it reminds us of another great light that took place some 2,000 years ago uh, when the wise men went to search of Jesus. And the scripture uh, in the Bible, uh, Matthew 2, 2, says this, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. That star was so bright back then, it was guiding the wise men to find the little babe, Jesus. And so now this light is once again appearing. It's appeared uh, through the years, but as I said, 800 years ago was the last time this light was seen as we will be able to view it uh, this coming next week or so. Some folks have been posting on Facebook about this light and about this upcoming event to take place. And I want you to listen to an article that was submitted about this great light fixing to take place. In the year when Jesus was born, there was violence, chaos, political and social unrest. It was dark. The Magi found him by the way of the star, which was the meeting of three stars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars, son of thought Venus. They followed the star until it rested on where he was, and they began to worship him. In a time where it was dark, light was brought into the world. Jesus stepped into the chaos and brought peace. Fast forward to the year 2020. It's a time of violence, chaos, political and social unrest. It is dark. December 21st being a time when the day is the shortest and night is the longest. It's literally the darkest day and it's beginning of what most would say the cold dark winter season but on the darkest day this year jupiter and saturn will meet giving us the christmas star how fitting that in the moment of time during this christmas season that we get to see this beautiful reminder that even in the darkest of times light will and has stepped in in our chaos he is there in our darkest time he is there. He brings light and makes all things new. So as you look out on December 21st for the Christmas star, may we be reminded of his power and his light that he brings for all mankind. He is perfect at stepping into chaos and bringing it into peace. Jesus, the greatest gift ever given. Do you know him? That's how that article ended. And so that is a good question. Do you know him? Now, there are mainly three reasons for light when we think about it. First of all, light makes it possible for us to see things as they truly are. How many of us have gotten up in the dark of the night, maybe the power went off, and we went to the refrigerator, and we're getting something to drink, or maybe go to the restroom, and it is so dark, your nightlight's not burning, and you're inevitably going to stump your toe, or you're going to run into something. 
the other night we we started decorating and Susie had boxes all over the place and we've not I've not put them up yet and so it was dark and I was walking through the house and I bucked into a box I said they don't belong there what happened and then I turned on the light and I remembered I forgot to put the box up and so lights help us to see things as they truly are it dispels the darkness so we can see what is in front of us then secondly light gives off heat we think about last night in particular or early this morning, it got down to 28, 29 degrees, and maybe cold in some places. Many of us put a light in our pup house, not so we can see what's inside, but that that light will give off the heat in that small area. And many of us do this regularly when it gets below freezing. Then we think about light cheers us up. Uh, we go into a dark house and it's dreary. Uh, we open up those blinds, we pull back those curtains, we let the light in, and it cheers us up. And we just get a great feeling from the light that comes from the outside into our homes. Making decisions in the dark, I heard, is a dangerous thing as well. Sometimes it leads to regrettable consequences. Back in the days before electricity, a tight-fisted old farmer was taking his hired hand to task for carrying a lighted lantern when he went to call on his best girl. Why, he exclaimed, when I went according, I never carried one of those things. I always went in the dark. And his hired help said, yeah, and look what you got. <laughs> so light's a good thing, amen. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 9, we get to the point in the latter part of that scripture where Jesus is described as the true light. Not just a light, but the true light. There are many lights in the world when we think of it. In fact, Jesus, he, speaking of John the Baptist, said that he was the light sent to the world. In John chapter 5, verse 32 through 35, listen to Jesus' testimony of John the Baptist. John 5, 32 through 35. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that his witness, or the witness which he witnessed of me, is true. He sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say, that ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and you were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. And so Jesus speaking of a mortal man as a light. What did he mean by that? He was a burning and a shining light pointing the way to God. Pointing the way to God through Jesus. He said, behold, the Lamb of God as he baptized Jesus in the River Jordan. He was always trying to magnify God through Jesus. He even said to himself one time, Jesus must increase, I must decrease. He was always shining the light towards Jesus to give God the glory. And then Jesus spoke of another type of light he speaks of Satan. He says of Satan, he is transformed into an angel of light. Now listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 in verses 14 concerning Satan. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. I'm going to begin in verse 13. For such are false prophets, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. In other words, he's a deceiver. He comes on the scene, make it like he's one of God's people, but he's always trying to deceive people and pull them into darkness. And so Jesus spoke of him uh, through the Apostle Paul even. But here in John chapter 1, verse 9, this is what the scripture says concerning Jesus. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Jesus is the one and true light that lights men and shows or light, gives the light to men and shows them the way of salvation. Uh, think about that. Jesus came into a world of spiritual darkness. And he opened wide the door of grace for all of those who would enter in. He lighted the way to God by his accomplished death on the cross of Calvary. They were wandering in darkness. Mankind was. 
We were born in sin, born in darkness, born with the sin nature. But Jesus shows us the way to God is through him. He said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. He points the way to God through salvation. And so Jesus came to illuminate the way, to show us the way to salvation through his accomplished death on Mount Calvary. The light that Jesus gives out accomplishes one of two things. It will either cause men to repent of their sin and run to the open arms of Jesus Christ and God the Father, or it will cause men to reject the message of Christ, the gospel of Jesus Christ, reject the light, and continue on their course in darkness. One leads to salvation, the other leads to damnation. Now, listen to what Jesus says of himself found in John chapter 8, verse 12. This is Jesus speaking. Then Jesus, or then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light of life. He says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He has enough light for everyone that will come unto him. His light is not diminished by just a few that come into the front of the back. His light is as bright for each and every one that will come to receive salvation. When he walked upon this earth, Jesus was in the business of delivering men from their darkness. In fact, the scripture that we have just read, John 8, verse, uh, John chapter 8, verse 12, uh, speaks about the woman that was taken in adultery, uh, the previous verses, and brought to Jesus. And Jesus said, Well, where are those thine accusers? She said, Lord, I have none. And he said, Neither do I condemn thee. Why? Because he comes to give light to show the way of salvation. He doesn't come to dispel darkness. He comes to dispel uh, the, or give out the light so the darkness will not uh, be hindered in anyone's life any longer. If you've ever been saved, then you know the joy of coming to the light of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And may I say, Jesus is still in the delivering from darkness business again today. He still delivers men and women and boys and girls from the darkness of life if we would just turn to him. He is still a shining light. He is still a savior if we will all come to him for salvation. I am always thrilled when I hear someone give a testimony of the life that they lived that was dark, that was just uh, full of darkness, but Jesus called them out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. And I've heard some of these testimonies just recently. Uh, we hear about people uh, who've been delivered from alcohol, people who've been delivered from drugs, people who've been delivered uh, from a way of life that is unseemly, but when they turn to Jesus, he dispelled the darkness and he brought light into their life. Amen. Amen. Now, when we follow Jesus, we're to obey Jesus. Wouldn't you agree with that? When we follow him with our whole heart, then we're to obey him. And so he puts light into our hearts, and we, in fact, become the light to the world. He is the light of the world, but we become the light to the world, reflecting Jesus everywhere we go. Listen to what Matthew chapter 5 says. Uh, verses 14 through 16 says, Concerning you and me, become lights of the world. Matthew 5, beginning in verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Amen? Let men see our good works. Let us be a glowing light so they can see our works, and they will in turn glorify the Father, which is in heaven. I tell you, we need and we must abide in the light. Let's turn to 1 John for just a moment. We're going to close out in 1 John. We're going to look at chapter 1 for just a moment, and then look at chapter 2. 1 John chapter 1, listen to what verses 1 through 10 says. 
1 John chapter 1. This is the same writer of the Gospel of John. He is a much older man. He is about 96 years of age. He's on uh, pretty close to being on the Isle of Patmos. He's writing the first general epistle of John, what it says. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show it to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. If you'll go back and take the time to read the Gospel of John chapter 1, uh, in particular 13 and 14, along with these verses, he is pretty well saying about the same thing. Notice as he continues, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And so look back at verse 7 for just a moment. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. God desires that every one of us walk in the light as he is in the light. To walk in the light means there is no deceit within us. We are pure. We're living in purity. We're living in holiness. We're looking unto Jesus as he leads us and guides us. And we follow his directions each and every step of the way. Now look in verse John. Uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. 1 John 2, 1 through 11. My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. That word propitiation means the atoning sacrifice. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him, in you, and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith, he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness have blinded his eyes. You see, verse 9 through 11, let's put it this way. He says, if you say you're walking in the light, but you hate your brother, you're deceiving your own self. You're still in darkness. That's, that's right to the point. But let's, let's just put it this way. Now, this is the way I can understand it, and maybe you can understand it just as well. If a man works outdoor, a lady works outdoors, uh, 
they're naturally going to get a tan because of being in the direct sunlight. And you're out there and you're going to get a natural tan. We always talk about the farmer's tan. And people go to the beach, they get a tan. But if you work outside all the time, you're naturally going to be more tan than someone who works on the inside like a factory. And they work indoors every moment of the day. They never go outside, do any activities outside. Then their skin stays pretty fair. Uh, we call pale skin. And, and so there's a difference. Well, when you're walking in the light of Jesus, think about this. Those who work in the sunlight, we can tell because there's a glow about it. Uh, their skin is a, a lot more tan. Especially if somebody goes to the beach and gets sunburned, they come home and we see they, hey, you're just glowing today. The red is shining all over them. We know they've been in the sun. Well, when you live like you ought to live for Jesus, people can tell you've been in the light because you're walking in the light. And you'll be glowing with the glow of Jesus all over you. And so I want to challenge you. As Jesus is the light of the world, who lights the way for every man, let us make sure that we also are walking in the light, that we can be reflectors to show Jesus to each and every one we come in contact with. Because we're to follow in the light as he is in the light. Anyone have a testimony or comment you'd like to share? Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, that you have shown us the way some of us many, many years ago and some of us more recently Praise God, we saw the light, and we came to the knowledge of salvation as the Holy Spirit drawed us, and, and Father, as you accepted us into your family through the accomplished work of Jesus Christ. I pray now that as we walk in the light, we're true, we're faithful, we're sincere, we're pure, and we walk holy as you are holy, and that we can show others to the light of Jesus Christ that will save their souls. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, children. Those that are singing, if you will, go to the choir room and get your book. And we'll go ahead.